We've already gone through several videos explaining exactly how you should be grinding throughout Team of the Season. Each and every one of these goes through the full step-by-step -step process, but it does tend to be quite a bit of a grind. Not only do you need to continue playing games, but it's also recommended to go through various other game modes. It becomes quite a lot. So in this video, we're going through the laziest way whilst still being able to have a good chance of getting a team of the season player. But before we do get into the video, if you want the laziest way, then there is no better place than Skycoach. Skycoach offers cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 23 coins. So all you need to do is place an order and those coins will be added to your account, ready for you to buy whatever players you want or open as many packs as you want. This truly is the laziest way if you're really looking to grind team of the season. A link can be found in the description down below, and if you use Fnatic at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 10% discount. Nice. Grind in Team of the Season in the laziest way possible. As already mentioned, you could go through every single game mode. Go through Division Rivals, win 8 games so you get the maximum reward, go through your Foot Champions playoffs, and then the Foot Champions finals, grind as many SBCs as possible whilst recycling players, Claim any free packs that EA deliver. Go through squad battles on a weekly basis, making sure that you're getting as far as possible with the points so that you can get the best possible reward for the time that you put in. Go through objectives, which will require you to play through friendlies. And then, of course, go through foot draft, whether that be online or single player, or go through foot moments. This, if you're really trying to get the most out of every single game mode, is going to take hours away. Tens of hours every single week. Is way too much for most people, including myself. So if we're looking for the laziest way to go through this, it's now time to start focusing and prioritizing the best possible game modes, which require the least amount of effort, but will still give you a reasonable reward. So firstly, it's best to keep on going through friendlies and objectives. Objectives themselves is by far one of the best ways in which you can grind packs. Most of them will require you to go through friendlies and complete various tasks. Score with a player from a certain league, get an assist with a player from a certain league. Play a certain amount of games with X amount of players from a specific league. It's all very generic stuff. These will reward you with relatively good packs, packs that does have a good chance of being able to get someone good. Doesn't guarantee a team of the season, but in a lot of cases, they will give you 81+, plus, 83+, plus, 84+, plus, and 85+, plus player packs. And those are the ones that you want to look out for. It is also worth going through XP if you have not completed your seasonal rewards. Seasonal rewards throughout the team of the season promo is also pretty good. So if you can get XP to rank these up faster, you will get the boring stuff such as TFOs and any type of stadium customization options, but you will also get very good packs and also some pretty decent players as well. In terms of the best reward for time, it is going through friendlies and completing objectives, but objectives aren't just strictly for friendlies. There will be a lot of objectives which require you to go through your division rivals, your foot champions, or even the squad battles. And these themselves are also pretty decent. But the reason that we're staying away from them for this video is because we're looking at the laziest way. The least amount of time that you can put into this game and still be rewarded somewhat generously. You will be able to grind a lot more packs by going through the friendly game modes and completing objectives than what you will be able to do if you went through division rivals, foot champions, and squad battles, the only benefit from those is that you do get your weekly rewards. But strictly speaking, because when you go into a friendly game mode, play a game, if you score, a lot of times your opponent will quit. And that means that you're able to go through these at a much faster rate compared to every other game mode. Even though those other game modes will give a weekly reward at the end, whether that be through division rivals, foot champions or squad battles, you're able to go so much further with friendlies, even though friendlies as a whole doesn't have weekly rewards, not like that. But you can go through so many more objectives within the exact same time and that's will make up for it, as long as you are able to win. If you're not so much of a confident player, then it is the case of going through squad battles or division rivals. That's the only exception here. 
but for most of you you will be able to go through friendlies now the reason that you still want to grind games which i know sounds pretty generic even though we are going through the laziest way to grind team of the season is because you still need a source of players you need new players coming in so that you can go through the next step which is of course your sbcs now with SBCs, you can go through the long process of being able to use some of the lower tier SBCs that are available and gradually build up your players as you keep on upgrading them. But as we're going through the laziest way, you really only want to be focusing on gold upgrades and the best possible SBCs that are available to gift you players. As we are looking at the laziest way to grind, if you were to go and sit there and keep on building up every single player through the whole SBC process, yes, it is a good way to go about things, but also it's going to take quite a bit of time. So to speed this up, you just want to focus on your gold upgrades where you're going to convert any common gold players you get from any of the friendly game modes and objectives that you manage to complete. Those rewards will give you players and then you want to immediately start upgrading them into something that's going to be a bit better and you want to put them into some of the better sbcs that are going to give you 80 plus 81 plus 83 plus 84 plus 85 plus or even the guaranteed team of the seasons themselves the cool thing with a lot of these packs not the guaranteed team of the season packs but the rest of them is that you're going to get a lot of players back regardless of what players inside so even with the 81 plus, even though you're going to be given up a decent amount of players, you're also going to get quite a few back. So even if you get something awful, you should still be able to use them back into SBCs again to keep this going. And in all honesty, SBCs is where you're going to be finding the most success. And I know a lot of you will be wondering, if SBCs is so good, surely the laziest way to grind for team of the season is just to stick to SBCs. And that would be true, except if you keep on going through it, gradually over time, you will lose players. With every single reward that you get, the packs that you open, even though you're getting something back, it's not always going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. You might give up 11 players and you may get eight players back. And even though there's a chance that you could get something of value within that pack, nine out of 10 times, you probably won't. So when you recycle all of them, you no longer have 11 players, you have eight. And gradually as you keep on doing this, you're going to lose more and more and more so that you can go for it less and less and less. And that is why we did talk about friendlies and objectives at the beginning. So that if you did give up 11 players in order to go and get eight players, just to have a chance of getting someone good, the friendlies and objectives will make up those other free players so that you will always have players to use within these SBCs. Now, really, with all of this, you could just focus on those friendlies, objectives and SBCs with the gold upgrades and then looking at the best possible challenges. But I want to add one more step. The only real way in which you can guarantee success within Ultimate Team is by trading and we're not going to do anything complicated. If you just use a bulk bid method where you will find a specific player, a cheap rare gold player that's going for about 1,000, maybe 1,500 coins and bid on them just a couple hundred coins less, you will be able to profit from them and you will be able to get a lot of them. Individually, it's nothing too crazy, but as you're able to go and get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, however many that you really want every single hour, you're able to make thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands every single day, as long as you keep on going, bidding and selling. It takes about five minutes for you to find a player and then max out the watch list to 50. And the reason that I wanted to go and add this, even though we probably could do without a basic, simple trading method for this type of video, you could just do friendlies, objectives and SBCs. I still wanted to talk about trading because it is the only real guaranteed way to push forward and get team of the season players. That is by buying them. I know it's not as as exciting as being able to open a very small seven and a half K pack and being able to get the most expensive player that is currently available. But unfortunately, due to EA really wanting to milk gambling mechanics within FIFA, you have a very low chance of that happening. You can open as many packs through objectives and SBCs as you want, but 
there's still no guarantee. And even with the guaranteed SBCs, they do require you to have a fairly decent amount of players for you to go and submit them into. You're giving up quite a bit and there's still no guarantee that you're going to get something good. You could get the worst team of the season that is currently available. That's why I do still recommend trading as much as you can. And for this video, I've given you something extremely basic so that you can keep this going and you're able to build up your coin balance and you can eventually buy into the team of the season player that you want. Of course, if you're looking for some of the best of the best of the best, they're going to cost millions of coins. And it's going to take you a lot of time, a lot of basic trading method with a bulk bidding method. But for most of the players, you will be able to build up to them. If you do have any questions about anything, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going. So see ya.